Yo, what is up guys, JT here. I'm bringing you the update video for version 124 today. This is a little bit of a catch-up vlog because we haven't made videos for our past few versions. So it's going to be jam-packed with a lot of features. It's not everything that we've worked on, but it's everything that went into the video nicely. You can check our changelog for a full set of changes. We know that there's been a lot of controversy in the genre recently, but I want to assure our community and supporters as ever that we're endeavouring to make the best first-person zombie survival game on the market. Without further ado guys, let's jump straight into this video, enjoy. The foundation of version 124 is all about base building. The community has been requesting for a really long time the ability to clear up their bases. So we started with this. It's now possible to clean up everything from inside of your base so that you can start with the, a nice foundation for building it up how you want it to be. We've added various shelving units and tables which can be free placed in the world so that you can organize your bases how you want them to be. This utilizes the new blueprint system which I'll go into in more detail in this video. Peg balls allow you to organize all of your guns and tools so that you can get them up out of your inventory and get them up on the wall so that they're quickly there to access if you're fighting off a horde or you need them very quickly. You can just place them up on the wall and keep everything nice and organized. Free place barricades are now placed using the blueprint system. This allows you to set out your base very quickly before having all the resources needed to build these items. You can lay out your base and then slowly add the resources and build these up over time. Craft inventors now use this system as well and serve a new purpose in the game. You no longer need to be stood near a workbench to craft certain recipes. Instead, they speed up crafting times. You can also place your tools directly onto the workbench and they no longer need to be in your inventory to be compatible with the recipe you're crafting. The crafting UI has also been overhauled to categorize all of the items that are able to be crafted. And as you can see here, they're also level locked now. So it's always clear what you're able to craft at any given time. And it's always easy to find the item that you want to be able to craft. Jumping over to weapons now, we've added this crossbow, which really bridges the gap for melee and ranged weapons. It has retrievable arrows and you can also craft arrows from feathers that you find from chickens. It's great for hunting, but also great for killing zombies silently. It can be really good when you're sneaking around and wanting to just take out a few zombies with headshots. And like I mentioned before as well, the arrows are completely retrievable, which makes, makes it really reusable and sustainable early in the game. The new flare gun really serves a few different purposes in the game. You can fire it into a room to cast light so you can see, but you can also equally fire it up into the air and signal your friends across the map. And of course, it's always a lot of fun to set a zombie on fire with one of these. The new MK4 really fills the gap between the lower end weapons and the ARG-15. It uses a common ammo type, which is 9mm. It isn't the most powerful gun in the world, but it's very, very versatile and can take down zombies very quickly. With this weapon, we've added two new attachment types, which is Burst Fire and Full Auto. These are the first Full Auto and Burst Fire weapons that the game has ever had. And we really didn't want to stop there. So we've also added these attachments for the Rouser Rig Pistol, the ARG-15 Assault Rifle, the FRKS Auto Shotgun. We've overhauled the weapon attachment systems. And we really felt that there was too much limit on what attachments would go on which weapons so we've really rolled out a policy here in house of if it fits on the gun then it should be possible so you can put a scope onto a shotgun if that's what you want to do or equally you can add sniper scope to a pistol how effective those are on the weapon is all for you to find what works in your play situation Weapon models were starting to look outdated in the game, so we've overhauled nearly all weapons now with new models. Some have had new sound and animations as well to really give the game a more modern feel. Weapons should overall be feeling much more enjoyable to use. Propane and shotgun traps can now be placed on the floor or they will snap to windows as well which really for the first time gives players a last means of defense on their windows these can be really useful when zombies break through the fortifications and it would be otherwise about to make it in through the door we've also added this new fully automatic shotgun trap as well which means that shotgun traps aren't just single use only this really allows you to fend off a good few amount of zombies through a window before they start making their way in We've added nail bomb mines so that you can place these around your base. So the zombies may never even make it to the fortifications if that's how, what you want to choose. This really can serve as a really, really nice first line of defense for your base. And it's a lot of fun seeing the zombies going flying up into the air. In the original concepts of the game, we showed a bait 
propane trap and we finally got that in in this version now if you place the trap and make some noise zombies will slowly be lured out to the to the bait trap you don't ever have to worry about killing them yourself you can just shoot the propane trap it'll go off and take out the vast majority of the zombies this can be really useful when you're trying to clear a big building or you want to take on a poi it's just a really good strategical item to use bear traps no longer release zombies after time if a, if a bear trap catches a zombie it will remain trapped indefinitely until you kill it or you release it and this means that and this also works on players as well so there's a lot of strategy that can be used with bear traps now one of the biggest features requested in the game by the community is chaining of explosions. We've not had the time to really implement this in the past and we finally got round to it and I'll admit to the fact it is a lot of fun. Sometimes you'll be in your base and you'll accidentally shoot a propane trap and it causes all kinds of chaos and carnage. As the game has developed, we really realised that there was this problem that we couldn't balance the game for all player types. So we added the ability for world saves in the game and we added over 100 config options so that players can really tailor the game to what they want it to be and the play experience that they want to have. Additionally, we've made scenarios, which are workshop items, which let people upload these world saves to the work steam workshop so that others can play their experiences we have a bunch of official scenarios from realism right through to nazi zombie style experiences and then the community have also been making really awesome scenarios to really give the community the very specific play style that they're looking for that wraps up this vlog guys I want to say a massive thank you to everybody in the community for continuing to support Survive the Nights. Without you, we wouldn't be here. The dead really do matter to us. If you have any ideas, please jump over onto the Discord or leave a comment below. Consider subscribing if you want to keep up to date with all of our updates. I will catch you in the next one. Bye-bye.